Two scuba divers wanted the thrill of a lifetime, but they got a little more than they bargained for. On Wednesday, we showed you that stunning video of a great white shark bursting into a protective cage off the coast of Mexico. The shark ripped it apart, but neither diver was hurt. Both had their cameras rolling. Patrick Walsh and Paul Damgard are the lucky survivors. Good morning to you guys. Hi, guys. Good morning. morning. Well, it happened about a year ago, but it's got to still be very fresh in your minds for sure. Absolutely. It was a terrifying experience, so it's hard to forget. You've been diving for, what, 28 years? Is that right? right? Yeah. Have you ever had any experience like this before? Why, did, why do you think this happened? Well, I think the shark just got disoriented. And, uh, you know, when they, when they grab the, uh, the hang bait, the eyes roll back, and it just got... So it wasn't going for you guys? No, no. not at all. There's actually a protective membrane. It's called a neck tape membrane that goes over their eyes whenever they're in a predatory manner. And so they're essentially blinded when they hit their prey, and that's what happened here. And when the shark came out of the water, came back in, it was completely blinded, hit the cage, blinded. And, and the video we're seeing, this is the one that you were shooting? Yes, Patrick, this is my, is my footage. Uh, here, here's my issue with this, okay? Uh, you use bait to get the shark close to the cage, right? If, if I were diving and someone said, okay, we're going to use shark bait to get the shark close to the cage, my first question would be, if this shark gets into this cage, is the cage strong enough to keep the shark away? Did you, not, did you guys ask that question? It was definitely on my mind. <laughs> um, yeah, but these cages, I mean, they were on the boat. We, we were able to see them while we were motoring out. We had a 24-hour uh, boat ride out there, and, and they're substantial cages. It took the crew of six to, to even get one of these into the water. And you can see, I mean... That was the first time a, it hit, that it pulled that out? This is just one bar from, from the cage, and it's, it's not a weak... Uh, and it's, if you can pull back, you can see this thing's bent pretty good. Now, Paul, you were worried about Patrick. You're the more seasoned diver, obviously. He had just been certified. You were, I, I got the sense trying to protect him. Well, at that time, I, I actually pushed him out towards the uh, little escape hatch. And uh, then everything just tore loose. Uh, you know, is thrashing inside the cage. Is this your video that we're seeing now? This is Patrick's this is video. Patrick's video. Yeah. Okay, that's a video that's from you, right? Well. Yeah. Let, let's see if we can roll Paul's video because I don't think anybody's seen seen that so far. So, so you're now trapped in the cage, Paul, right? Yeah. So yeah. Okay, this is Paul's the here. Yeah, and it comes right in the viewing window, and then I'm just being tossed around. Did you think? For a moment, this could be it. <laughs> I knew it was not going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I definitely thought it was over. When, yeah. when I looked, when I looked up and I saw Paul, one of the things that, that I remember distinctly is his head was silhouetted by a, a red glow. And it turns out, after looking at the footage later, it's just a, a, a float that's basically keeping these two cages from bashing together. And it just happened to be red, so it's silhouetting his head behind the shark. And I, you know, I, I thought it was blood. And, Oh. It was it was definitely a terrifying experience. How did this thing end, yeah. by the way? How did you guys get away from the shark, and how did you get out of the water? Well, well for me, uh, I, I'm tethered with the, the hookah line and a, uh, a harness, and they were able to just hoist me right straight out of the cage. So you, but you had a lot of weight on you then. Yeah, yeah. it was about 40 pounds of weight. And you? Yeah, uh, I mean, I actually was... I slid out the side of the cage and, and you know, had, had the same type of situation. Didn't have a BCD to control my blood. Flotation device. Didn't have fins. I just had a, about 50 pounds of weights on me, and the only thing that kept me from sinking to the bottom was that hookah line and the fact that the crew was pulling on that. Uh, but when I exited the cage, you know, I had another shark below me, and luckily, I mean, these these aren't the the man eating, you know, bloodthirsty monsters that they're made out to be in some, some of uh, the media, but. Um, yeah, nevertheless, I, I, yeah. I thought the worst at the time. Well, here's my issue. You both have gone diving since, haven't you? Yeah, actually, we were back in the water you know, with, within an hour of this incident. Uh, actually, there's a separate cage. These are actually mounted on the back mm. of the boat. There's a separate cage that actually drops off the side and goes about 30 feet underwater. Uh, so obviously your brains were rattled in this experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually you can see the cage oh, here. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. That's a, a submersible cage. It's actually more like a platform, but uh, I was back in the water probably 15, 20 minutes after in that cage. Well, you guys didn't know yeah. each other before this happened. You're now soulmates, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to have you both sure here. Is. We're happy you're both okay. Yeah. Great footage, by the way. Thank you. Thank happy you. holidays to both of you, too. You, too.